Hi everyone, I'm Michael, and today I just wanted to give some encouragement to you guys uh, during this season of COVID. Uh, today I'll be looking at the book of Hebrews and talking about Jesus in relation to broken sinners. And maybe during this time you felt alone or felt like no one understands you and feels like you have to run the race all by yourself. Um, or maybe during this time you're going through something difficult and wonder where is God in all of this. Or maybe you've been coasting for some time and find it hard to go to God because you feel unworthy or feel you don't meet some sort of criteria. Uh, but from Hebrews chapter 4 verses 14 to 16, I'm um, hoping to show you God's response to all of that. Uh, which is one, Jesus walks alongside you. And two, uh, you can go to Jesus with confidence. And so let's read Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 to 16. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Amen. Jesus walks alongside you. Uh, looking at verse 16, we see Jesus is able to sympathize with our weaknesses, uh, which means no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're experiencing, Jesus sympathizes with you. And now this sympathizing isn't being used here in the traditional way that we would come to expect, uh, where it brings to mind someone standing far off and acknowledging your pain or hurt. Rather, this sympathizing is similar to the one we see in the book of Acts, uh, where Saul is going around hunting Christians and Jesus asks him, uh, why are you persecuting me? Um, and the key word there is, is the word me. Uh, our hurt and everything we may be feeling are intimately felt by Jesus as if he were the one experiencing that pain or that hurt. Now maybe some of you may be thinking, well, that only happens when somebody has, has hurt me. Uh, surely it doesn't apply when I've been the one hurting God while I've been sinning or while I've been neglecting him. Uh, but we see in verse 15 that the very thing Jesus sympathizes with isn't just our pain, but our very weaknesses, namely our heart's desire to continually sin. And because he has been tempted not just in some respects, but in every respect, as it says in verse 15, uh, we know that there is no sin, no temptation that he doesn't know the full strength of, suffering that comes along with it. And so in whatever we may be going through, uh, we know Jesus has been there before. And he knows intimately um, every detail, every experience, every moment of pain, every moment of despair. And the temptation we have in our sin is to think, no Jesus, you don't truly understand what you're doing. I know you've forgiven my sins, but if only you knew what I've done or how many times I've turned away from you, You've offered me the chance to turn back so many times in the past, but I've walked away from them all. And yet, God's word still stands when he said in Romans 8.1, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. God's word is final. Um, and whatever sin we may think of or do, uh, whatever we may be feeling, uh, whatever level of intensity or the clarity of our faith, uh, the answer for the question, has Jesus' blood covered this particular sin, is always, without a doubt, a firm and resounding yes, uh, which moves us to the question of how we should respond and also to our second point. You can go to Jesus with confidence. Looking at verse 16, the author of Hebrews says, in light of all of the aforementioned truths, let us then draw near to the throne of grace. Sometimes we feel we need to muster up faith or uh, feel clean or have a certain level of spirituality in order to approach God, but the author of Hebrews makes it clear that none of these things are a requirement for approaching the throne of God. Nowhere in verse 15 does it have any mention about what we can do, but rather the whole argument is, is because of Jesus, we can with confidence draw near to God. So whether or not we may feel this way or that way, uh, the truth which stands apart from what we may be feeling a particular day or what we may be thinking a particular day is that yes, we can go to God, regardless of what we may be feeling or, or experiences. God is the same. 
the whole reason we go to God is because we are created beings in need of that grace and mercy every moment of our lives. We were meant to be with God forever, and it's in His presence that we receive the grace and mercy our hearts deeply long for and need. And God gives it to us in abundance. In verse 16 it says, God's throne is the throne of grace, and the chief seat that God sits upon and from which He holds and moves the whole created order is one of grace namely one of undeserved favor for sinners. And it's with this undeserved favor for us as sinners that makes God's love independent of what we may do or what we may feel, but one that is the same for us forever. And so I hope this time in God's word has been encouraging to you as it has been for me. And just know that whatever you may be going through, whatever you may be feeling, whatever pit you may be feeling trapped in right now, Jesus walks alongside you and he tells you to come to him with the utmost of confidence.